This is a tutorial to go over proper essay writing. We're going to take it step by step with an example. What is an essay? An essay is a written collection of information organized and divided neatly into paragraphs. Remember, an essay is a written form of communication. It must be clear, organized, and easily understandable to those reading. Why do we write essays? Well, to state and support our opinions, and to persuade others to agree with you. We use the five paragraph format for essays because this keeps us organized. The first paragraph is the introductory paragraph, the second, third, and fourth paragraphs are the body paragraphs, and the fifth paragraph is the conclusion. Up until ninth grade, you pretty much are given a set format and are allowed to use certain phrases and techniques. As we transition into high school and move through high school, we gradually eliminate some of those crutches and build up your vocabulary and your writing techniques so that you sound more and more professional. Because when you sound more professional, people take you seriously. This is a visual of what the essay would look like. Obviously, these are not paragraphs. The first paragraph, which is represented by the rectangular box is, box, is your introduction, then your three body paragraphs, and your conclusion. Your introductory paragraphs should first be focused on whatever writing prompt you are provided. Rephrase the prompt and add what you're going to discuss. Don't discuss the details yet, but just inform us what you're going to be writing about in order to prove the prompt. For example, if you had a prompt for U.S. History 1 that said to analyze the causes of the Civil War to determine and explain which three were the ultimate causes, you could start off by saying there were multiple causes leading up to the Civil War. That's basically rephrasing the prompt. Although difficult to determine which three ultimately led to the conflict, three events especially escalated tensions up until 1861, restating the prompt. The Dred Scott decision solidified the Supreme Court's interpretation of slavery's legality. The Missouri Compromise physically divided the nation between North and South. Finally, Uncle Tom's Cabin brought the reality of slavery into people's homes dividing the nation on culture and morals. And if I read into it further, I could tell that the person who wrote this is looking at political tensions, physical geographical tensions, as well as social and cultural tensions. So these are three very good events to talk about because they touch on different aspects of people's lives. The body paragraphs seem to give most students problems when they're going from 9th through 12th grade. Each body paragraph presents and explains a different point of view to prove your opinion. For this essay, the first body paragraph will talk about Dred Scott, the second, the Missouri Compromise, and the third, Uncle Tom's Cabin. An opinion is always stronger when it is supported with facts and proof. So my opinion is that Dred Scott the Missouri Compromise, and Uncle Tom's Cabin were the ultimate causes of the Civil War. I need to now back that up with facts. A fact is not what I've heard from other people. It's not what I've heard from my teacher. It's the evidence, the historical facts and proof, and the interpretation of it. How is a body paragraph formatted? If this was the paragraph for the first body paragraph, there would first be a topic sentence that introduces what this paragraph is about. Then I would provide my evidence. This explains the proof. It will explain the Dred Scott decision. However, in high school and in professional writing, you assume that the reader knows of the topic well enough that you do not have to write every detail. Instead, you are using this evidence and touching on it so that you could do the next step, which is to write an interpretive statement. This connects to your thesis. How does your evidence support your opinion? 
finally you finish with a transition statement, a sentence that segues from this topic to your next paragraph. Here's an example. In yellow I have the topic sentence, in turquoise the evidence, in green the interpretive statement, and in purple the transition statement. The Dred Scott decision of 1857 told the nation that our national government interpreted slavery as legal according to the Constitution. The reader knows that I'm talking about the Dred Scott decision and why it's significant. Now a few more details on the evidence. Dred Scott, a slave, had sought the opinion of the Supreme Court believing that because his master had brought him into the Northern Territory, he was, in fact, a free man. The Supreme Court denied him this, ruling that as a slave, he was property, and property could not sue for freedom. Up until this time, the national government had avoided taking a stance on the issue of slavery. This ruling, however, declared that it viewed it as constitutional. I've interpreted why this is such a drastic event. Here's my transition. Next, I'm going to talk about the Missouri Compromise. So I put, however, while this divided the country politically, one piece of legislation literally divided the nation in half. And I know in the next paragraph I'll be talking about the geographic split of the country that the Mood Story Compromise of 1820 caused. After you've written your introductory paragraph and your three body paragraphs, you finish with your conclusion. You need to avoid starting off by saying in conclusion, or as I have stated, or I believe. In fact, if you want to sound professional, you should never, ever, ever use familiar or informal wording in your essays. That includes the word I. There are other ways to state your opinion that sound more definite and more concrete and more assertive. People that continuously say, I believe or I think, does, it does not sound as concrete and they're not taken as seriously. So when you're writing your conclusion, first try to paraphrase your thesis, which means put it in slightly different words, revisit your evidence that you talked about in your body paragraphs, and then write an overall statement about the topic. Here's an example. No one event can be highlighted as causing the Civil War. It was the culmination of a multitude of political, social, and cultural events from the birth of this country until 1861. I've restated my thesis. However, because the Dred Scott decision caused such political tension, the Missouri Compromise a physical divide, and Uncle Tom's Cabin a cultural separation, these three can be seen as the sparks that touched all aspects of citizen life at that time. I retouched my evidence and I brought it home with a concluding thought about those events. This is basically how you write an essay. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It takes a lot of practice, just like anything else that's worth doing takes. But if you master this, then it will come naturally and you will be taken much more seriously with your writing. And at the college level and at the professional work level when you have to write papers, this means less revisions and less time. 